The Monerotopia guest segment is sponsored by Cake Wallet. Store, send, receive, and exchange of Monero and Bitcoin safely on iOS and Android too. Cake Wallet is open source, and you always control your own keys. All, All right. right. Hello. What's going on, Brindle Abdullah? What's going on, guys? My, is my microphone working okay? Yeah, you're pretty good. Okay, good. Best I can do for okay. now. So, uh... No, we'll, we'll take it. We'll take it. It's not bad. All right, all right. Abdullah, how you doing? How about, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, it's good. You guys are both um, good. Hi. Um, so Monero Noto, guys, what do, what do we got? Everybody's uh, on the on the edge of their seats. They've been on yeah, the edge it's... of their seats for, for months now. <laughs> you can tell any time, <laughs> any day now, any day, any day. Yeah, we're doing uh, our best. It's currently going through uh, basically the final TC. It's been a lot, guys. I just got to say, while we're out here in the public, uh, you know, behind the scenes, I, I could be cr quite cruel at times. So I apologize to Abdul. No, I, I fully I know, understand it, man. It's, I know it's they're, been a lot they're of work. working their freaking asses off. <laughs> and uh, I have nothing that I, I can do other than tell them, uh, fix this, fix this. Um, but yeah, they're, they're doing a fantastic job. And, and like I said on the outset, while there have been delays due to fabrication reasons, uh, we haven't been sitting on their hands, or they haven't been sitting on their hands since. They've been adding other features, uh, fixing fixing the, the bugs that we that we were noticing. Um, so there's been improvements and developments in the software. So I don't know, Abdul, if you want to, if you want to quickly, I guess first just give like an overall status of what's going on with the project, when we could expect delivery things like that and then uh we could we could get brindle involved and he could talk about the actual uh software and updates of where we're at with that sure thing um so the last update was that uh the... brindle if you could bring up the noto too if you can sh if you can show it on your screen i think you have a video set up for it if you want to do uh, that. yeah sure sure i can do that yeah oh jesus the light i'm sorry hold on uh <laughs> No worries. Okay, no worries. One, one second. Let me let me fix the camera angle so the yeah, light. Yeah, 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 yeah. Abdul Abdul will talk as 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 you do that. Go ahead. So we've uh, uh, given the factory the go go ahead to manufacture, and uh, part of the delay is uh, well they've got a major holiday coming up, uh, October first to the seventh, is uh, National um, China Day or China Week. Essentially, that's where everything is shut down. That's part of the delay. Um, in the meantime, yep, this is the production sample with the new display. There's been a lot of changes. Um, so perhaps I could skip over like the... Uh, well, let's, let's give them the overall update. So, right, we have, we have the issue with the holiday and whatnot, but what are we, you know, what can we say in terms of delivery at this point with confidence? Yeah, October end might be uh, pushed uh, a week back, but um, I made it clear and, and definitely the process has started. So um, I know that um, despite any unforeseen challenges, we'll still be able to uh, get these at the end of October at the very least. Oh boy! And of our, so are, 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 can we are we guaranteeing that they will be at Monero Topia? Can we guarantee that? I mean, obviously, I yeah, have... that's the goal, okay. right? That's what that's what right. uh, I've been oh, working for pretty much uh, twenty four seven, and so we've we've kind of been trudging along. There's a lot of uh, things we've added, um, most notably the new enclosure and the display stuff. But I want to get into like the new stuff that we um, that we've added since uh, we last spoke. So there's the um, a Monerica, um, a, a directory for the circular economy. And so that has introduced RSS feeds. And so that, that'll that show the latest additions to the Monero circular economy. And uh, of course, with uh, XMR Bazaar, uh, hopefully we'll be able to uh, later add um, the new additions uh, in the same way and uh, all right yeah i'm pretty sure we have rss feed set up for that yeah and monerica is new that's uh, that came yeah. out after we implemented uh, the news feeds mm -hmm. 
And so uh, along with all the other um, feeds that we have, uh, America is a new one. And then we have new keyboards. This is based on off of uh, customer feedback. So along with the standard QWERTY keyboard, we now have AZRD and uh, Quartz, which is used in Germany, I believe. Uh, and uh, also dedicated a numpad row on that keyboard. Uh, sync percentage, um, yeah, the, and there's a new Wi-Fi selection menu, maybe if you go to device and Wi-Fi. And there we go, so yeah. Um, I'm kind of cautious on showing it because my, my home network is on it too and I'd rather not <laughs> show that, right. but it, it does show networks. <clears throat> yeah, we'll get into that, we'll streamline the menu. Also mining, we've switched that from P2 pool to uh, solo mining. We just thought it might, you know, give us uh, overall uh, better odds of success uh, in terms of mining. Um, and the hash rate, which we've tested, is uh, not much different to uh, P2 pool mining. P2 pool was slightly higher, and with solo mining, we're getting around 700 passes per second, which is yeah, stable. roughly between six and seven hundred. Yeah. Um, also, okay. we've got a new um, address uh, lock. As uh, so, this yeah. will uh, give a new pin pin locks basically to lock the device as well as lock the addresses on your device. And we'll get into this uh, in in a later feature as well, as well as the. Standard features that we've had, uh, Windows finish testing, LWS, uh, remote nodes that you know you can port forward and use it over ClearNet, which was you know part of the original use case. So using it all over your local network and also port forwarding and then using it remotely from from another network, uh, st uh, still being able to access your node at, you know, pretty much full speed. Uh, along with Tor and I2P, which which are slower, but yes, they do get around a lot of problems that we've had with um, node security and just security in general. Tor doesn't require port forwarding in any way. And so if you're using Tor, which is enabled by default, then you don't need to, um, uh, go into your router and change any settings, uh, port forward settings to uh, access your node remotely. It will be slower. You'll be you need to access your node over Tor, but you you'll know that it's at least your node and that you know the protocol is the, the transactions are still being communicated to the node over Tor or, or I two B. And then some Indeed. issues that we had in the field, um, uh, things like corruption, um, uh, things like this, a lot of uh, random bugs that we've fixed. Uh, and also there's a recovery button, perhaps uh, you could show yeah. that. Um, so I, I don't know. Um, it's a little close by, but there you go. Please focus, yeah. come on. So these are recess buttons. Uh, one of them says boot on the left, and one of them says RCVY, which is recovery. And what recovery will do is essentially factory reset your device in case anything breaks, like your screen isn't turning on, there's uh, some kind of corruption with blockchain, any any uh, file system type of gremlin that might have. You have to understand that uh, We've tried to keep things as light as possible, and you know, over Linux, it it, it really is an exceptional uh, performance uh, with the new hardware. But uh, the complexity sometimes uh, can cause unexpected gremlins, and that's what we've we're still in the process of uh, QC finding QC. And so, yeah, to make but, it all work together, it's uh, it, it's a lot, especially with all the extra features and bells and whistles around uh, the node itself. Right. Um, another cool new feature, um, you, we've had uh, translation, like uh, 110 different languages. Um, and so we've added this to news as well. Previously, news was just English. But now, no matter what feed it is, um, 
uh, using an open source um, program called Libre Translate, which is running locally on the Nodo. Um, that's going to um, give you translations to all, all, pretty much all the languages that will support. Oh, that's awesome! That's amazing. That's a great accessibility feature um, for for anyone. Um, and and last but not least, I know there's been a lot of um, talk about the Monero circular economy, and uh, Doug has been uh, kind of uh, tirelessly advocating for you know Monero adoption, pushing for merchants to come on board, um, not only personally, you know, with with, uh, with the show and but with uh, initiatives like XMR Bazaar. And so growing the circular economy has been very important to, to both of us. Uh, and to that end, we're very excited to announce a new feature, which will be available on release, um, which allows users to accept Monero directly via your Nodo. And this is done via an open source project, Monero Pay, uh, which is a simple backend to receive Monero. Uh, Brindo, there uh, seems to be some focus issue. Perhaps you could. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. It... <laughs> Look, maybe uh, I was trying just, to get more lines. Maybe just the... back out. Yeah, if you could pull it out a little, maybe back away a little oh, bit. Yeah, okay. focus, one, uh, one second. One second. Okay. <laughs> and so bringing merchants into the Monero circular economy has been a mission, you know, that we've been. Um, working towards and we hope to aid in this mission with Monero Pay, uh, which presents a simple non-custodial point of sale interface um, on Nodo. Um, and that will, uh, you, you just enter a primary wallet and view key and it will generate sub addresses and uh, keep a track of uh, transactions on your device and the the benefit of this is that your funds could still be on your primary wallet like your cake or whatever you first created your wallet whether it's uh monero gui or or um and so the wallet is your own you just enter the just like with the lws the primary address and the public view key and uh, it'll use wallet rpc uh to generate sub addresses each time uh, we want to receive a payment it's still quite a lot of blur. Um, uh, I can't. It, it is amazing. It is amazing that you guys developed this additional feature in the meantime. And I, I know uh, I, I saw a lot of passion involved with it. You guys were excited about this one. You guys, when you were working, yeah, on for it. sure. Like it, it makes total oh. sense, right? Yeah, you, you have a device with a screen on it. Uh, nine out of ten times, you would be using this in like a you know like a store uh, mm -hmm. sale setting. Uh, why not put a QR code on it to receive payments? It's like perfect for it. Yeah, it becomes a little POS system. Yeah, exactly. you don't have to uh, whip your Basically. phone out every time you want to accept Monero. Like if the supermarket is a prime example. Like it's there on the kiosk, and uh, that's your dedicated Monero. Uh, now, I was, I was telling Abdullah that the holy grail would be if we could get to the point where it then can kind of like integrate with existing POS systems, like using APIs from, you know, like Square or these other popular systems where it could. I, I think know, in theory it already. Piece of hardware. You know what I'm saying? I, so I think it like can already support that. In, like oh, most wow. of the systems have uh, like integration with Monero uh, by themselves. So if they could be pointed to this as a note, it should in theory work question mark but i'm not 100 percent sure on that i haven't researched it well for and now, what, what would you guys ex what would you guys describe as as the reasoning as going in this direction versus uh or you know adding btc pay server to this thing or like you know what's the what are the differences so, um, in... uh btc pay is quite a beast uh in its own it, like it's not bad software i'm not like ragging on it here but it it's quite large uh, it needs quite a bit of setup. It's ideally ran in Docker, which uh, we don't use on this device, so it would be quite a lot of overhead in itself. Uh, it's primarily designed for Bitcoin, and it has Monero optionally uh, slapped onto it. Uh, Monero Pay is made by people in the Monero community for Monero. Uh, it's very thin, and it sits between a Monero wallet uh, and whatever UI you build on top of it. So it's perfect for uh, for what we were going for. 
this allowed us to keep things really light and focused on Monero. Who, yeah. Um, it, who's been contributing to Monero? Like, who's like the main dev behind Monero Pay? Uh, it, it's two people, Siren and some other guy that I forgot the name of. Um, they also made Metro Nero, which is their own point of sale built on top of Monero Pay. Uh, oh, okay. I, I think it's MoneroPay.eu is how you can get to we, there. We got, we got to get them on. We got to get them on the show, or maybe participating in the conference even. Yeah, that would be maybe, cool. Maybe we, yeah, maybe we make uh, Monero <clears throat> Monero Pay part of the uh, hackathon thing we're doing with BTC Pay server. Maybe developing on that too could be interesting. I'm just throwing ideas out there. Um, very, very cool, man. Very cool, guys. This is uh super exciting that you've added the the pay pay terminal feature the pos system um tux you got you got any questions from what you've seen so far uh looks pretty cool uh it's a really nice device um and i don't know if this was read out yet your brother tipped dollar 23 how will you guys handle former updates or any other updates to the console etc so uh the device the currently there runs, too. Yeah. it runs an auto updater that runs once a day uh, that will include updates for uh debian itself uh, along with updates for all the sources that are used for uh, Monero D, Monero Block Explorer, um, and all the other ones. Um, th they're all tailor-made for each uh, source. So like Monero only updates when there's a new release. Um, LDBS updates when there's a new tag, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, and it runs it daily. So if you just keep the device running, it'll update. Um, I think it's three or four in the morning. Uh, so as to be as, as little of an inconvenience as possible. <clears throat> Uh, and any chance might... of firmware? Uh, well, that is included with the updates for Linux, as far as I know. Oh, okay. So it's actually subscribed to Flopped, the firmware update manager. As far as I know, yes. <laughs> That's cool. It's good to know. I ha I have my Noto sitting here. It was sitting dormant for a couple of weeks, um, just because mine needed to be kind of like, uh, you know, didn't have that feature yet, so it needed to be manually updated, and we haven't had yeah. time to do that. But we did it last night, so now, now uh, it, it it should have the late late enough software where it can auto update. So we'll we'll see tomorrow, right? This this will be a good test yes. if I wake up to a a more functional Noto. Uh, Perfect test environment. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> for a second because, oh yeah sure uh, i want to emphasize that um so we've uh since uh, i hope i can kind of go into this a little bit more because there's a lot and uh there's it's hard to communicate all of this you know via text by channels or you know twitter what have you and so uh, just to give context to the whole thing uh but we started late 2021 uh, when I reached out to Doug with this this idea about doing um, a plug and play note I had uh, surveyed the, the, the landscape and, and the hypothesis was that uh, you know there's this huge market for hardware a lot of it is controlled by these mega corps and on the very high end and on the consumer level like there's um, over time, an er er erosion of um, building stuff like the kind of hacking culture that maybe uh, the, the early Silicon Valley started out that way, you know, uh, plugging in trend, you know, different chips and stuff, um, trying to make uh, all kinds of things. And uh, given how difficult uh, it is to get the right right tool and to be able to even know that you you, you need this, uh, this particular set of tools over something else like for example mobile we know that everything is pretty much locked down by the manufacturer from from the get-go uh, there are very few exceptions I think graphene on pixel is, is one of them and and, and it works great uh, I, I would say that that's one of the that's uh, probably the way to go. And part of that goes back to self custody of your hardware. And so what we've built is really just scratching the surface of what's possible. We've had a vision to develop, uh, you know, node features. Um, and we've slowly added, um, you know, usability features after care for consideration each time. And so since we started, um, 
the hardware spec uh, has, along with everything else, has changed drastically. And right now, what we're looking at is uh, the 32 GB model with uh, all the uh, iterations that were made to the enclosure and the UI as well, which is uh, a bespoke UI using, again, Qt open source. And so it's it's highly custom, and uh, we've uh, ensured that you know it's running off of GPU, so it's not going to take uh, resources away from uh, whatever uh, the Nodo is doing at the time. And so what we're allowing essentially is full control and uh, over your uh, hardware, you're free to flash this, do you know run whatever OS you're free to. And uh, there's no essential uh, lock on, on on hardware to that extent. And um, I mean, there's a lot more to to explore with with just Nodo, like adding more stuff as we go along. Like you know, there's a lot of cool stuff that we had to leave behind or you know defer um, indefinitely. Like things, uh, cool stuff like uh, the. TX City, I believe it's called, or TX Street. TX Street, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That's a cool little. Yes, animation. I want to get that up there, man. I want to get that <laughs> up there. Uh, so it would look really fantastic 60 frames per second running off of uh, the OLED display. And so we'll get, you know, we'll get there. It's just, it's important for us to really um, hunker down and focus on what really matters. Uh, like the original focus, which was to be a node. And maybe if I could just uh, show like the extent of, um, yeah, I'm going to share my screen just to show you guys right. some pictures. You, you think we ever get to the point where it's like pe people are, are, are building apps that you can then, uh, you know, there's, 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 there's a Monero Noto store, right, where you can download apps that, yeah, that, that's... that run on the Noto. I think we've already gone in that di direction already. It's just that we've already selected uh, LWS, Monero Pay, exactly. Certain other like the blocks. Yeah, just store. just to reiterate. I mean, when this project first started, right? Uh, our our mission was to just create a plug and play Monero node. Uh, at the time, the attempt was the Monero box, uh, which thank you. To, to that gentleman uh, as well. He was helpful with us in the early days. Um, and, you know, we're sitting there, we're looking at it, we're trying to create, bas basically the, the mission was uh, make it something that somebody like me can just plug in and it runs a full node and that you can then easily connect your, your Cake wallet or your Monero Uju wallet to it. So you're running your own node uh, using LWS. That was really the, the feature set. Uh, that we were going for, which we've achieved. And uh, Brindle, actually, I want to ask you about that. Um, yeah. How 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 easy uh, are we? Is that at, at this point? But, but let me just finish my my larger point here. But then from there, the project really did grow once we realized, all right, we're going to have these devices sitting on people's desks. Um, why not? And what happens if we add a screen to it and start to just take advantage of the fact that you now have a narrow piece of hardware sitting sitting in people's desks, in their in their stores, in their businesses? Um, and once you add a screen and things like that, uh, the potential is is really endless with what we can do. It can be much more a Monero plug and play node first and foremost, but it really can be a, a piece of hardware that becomes quite usable for Monero users. Yeah, so uh, that, adding a wall or oh, LWS, yes, uh, LWS. Um, it, it's pretty easy to add uh, with my Monero. Uh, you have to manually add the address to LWS on the device in order to have it work because my Monero doesn't send like a a request to add the wallet to it. That that's just a my Monero thing. Uh, with Edge, Edge does send a request to. Uh, to the LWS daemon on the device, and you have a little menu where you can just hit uh, accept or deny. Uh, when it's added, it'll uh, look for new transactions 24-7, or at least as long as you have the Nodo running. Uh, and whenever you want, you can load up your uh, My Monero or Edge wallet, and it'll instantly have your, uh, your balance, and you're ready to send. <clears throat> With other wallets, it's pretty easy to add. You just uh, look up 
on networks, and then uh, on ClearNet it'll show the uh, the local IP to which you can connect. Uh, I've done it on the official Monero wallet. I've done it on Feather wallet. I've done it on Cake wallet. I've done it on Monero, uh, and it all works out of the box just fine. It's very easy to do. Uh, it's about as straightforward as any other node, except it, it shows you what you need to enter. So, yeah. yeah well, the address is displayed, and you just enter that into your node. Add, add as node, enter the address, and there's that. To, to be oh, clear, yeah. though, we're not there with Cake yet, right, in terms of uh, using LWS on Cake. Yeah, it. Cake does not have LWS, and I, I would love if it was ended because it's such a nice feature. Same with Monorio. I would love if it would support Tux, LWS. Come on, but... man. Tux, you got to make that happen. I thought, I thought yeah, we Tux, had some... Uh... What are you doing here, Tux? <laughs> no. I thought we had some Paul over at Cake. What's going on? <laughs> we have... I'm sure we'll get we there. We definitely talked know. about it. Uh, nah, one of one of the, the concerns that was brought up recently um, was in terms of the user experience because we're thinking about if we add this feature for we want to make sure that it, we provide guide tutorials for people to set this up even without a Monero Noto. Obviously, if they have a Monero Noto, it's more ideal. Mm -hmm. um, and I myself hasn't haven't looked into how simple the setup is yet because uh, it sounds like it's not the easiest thing to set up. And then of course you have to actually um accept the the wallet um like invitation on the lws side and that was actually one of my projects this week that i was going to start yesterday that uh got interrupted abruptly uh was <laughs> setting up lws on my end and making sure i understand the flow um Ooh, nice. so that'd be easy enough but i didn't get to that for obvious reasons uh but yeah we're, we're definitely talking about it um and well, we have we have so much bandwidth, and we're really trying to hone in on focus on fixing a bunch of long-standing Monero issues. Uh, so we're, we want to deal with that first, but we're definitely uh, trying to push for that if we can. At least I am. I want it to happen. Um, but it's we there's certain things that get prioritized, and it's I can't just say let's do this necessarily myself because I want to, right? Uh, but don't worry, well, I'm trying to make it happen. <laughs> well, if you need any help with it, you know where to find me. Uh, yeah, like I said, I'm sure we'll get there. Um, Silence. <laughs> yeah, yeah, c c come, come collab with Brindle. I, I know uh, Seth, Seth said too. He he had his eye on it as well. So I'm sure. I'm sure. I know. I know. Vic will. We'll definitely get a little once he sees these things up and running and you know pe people are adding uh other competing wallets with lws i'm sure uh, cake will, will quickly... it's such a nice experience lws especially when you're out and about and you're in a store and you don't have to wait 10 minutes to get the the recent like five blocks you know yeah yeah have you been so have you been like living on have you been using it in that regard as a, as a real uh yes i have but oh, mostly sweet. online though i haven't found anyone irl who wanted to uh, accept monero i live in the netherlands and uh, people here, like they don't even use cash anymore. Everybody just uses, uh, you know, um, debit cards everywhere. So uh, oh, man, to even begin about Monero is like, you know, why would I do that? Completely right? taken over over in your country. <laughs> yep. <laughs> any, any any chance we get you over to Mexico City? Nah, not a chance, man. I'm sorry. Uh, ah. Ba ba and going to no plan Hannibal or plane. I'm, I'm not going to do it. Sorry. <laughs> no I hate sorry. planes. I hate heights. I live in the in the lowest country in Europe, so. Okay. All right, well, <laughs> Sorry, maybe man. I'll see a Monero. We'll, we'll come over to him at some yeah, point. How about yeah, that? Yeah. <laughs> maybe you can make it, you could drive over to Monero, Con. You could make that happen. And Abdullah, we were we were really hoping to have him in Monerotopia, but it's going to be difficult for him for his travel situation as well with visas and stuff. Um, so we'll definitely have a remote um talk maybe it could be a workshop right because we'll have the notos there uh maybe it could be some kind of remote workshop uh but yeah there'll be there'll be a noto presence if, it if there's ever be. a monerotopia in europe i will definitely attend oh word okay i don't know i don't know that that's that's uh monero cons well, uh territory yeah, monero -Con know, isn't, yeah that's plenty right. of countries in europe <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, <laughs> we all have re right. weird funny languages let me just Can pull up. A... Well, go ahead. Go ahead, Tux. Ask your question. Oh, well, perfect. You pulled up the internet page. I have a question about the device because I remember 
um, in the specs. I remember a while a while back, maybe a few months ago, there was a change in regards to I think how much RAM it has, and it also changed the price. Um, so if you could just give clarity on um, what people are getting who had purchased it at the previous price with the previous specs, are they getting exactly that? Sure thing. Uh, yeah, happy to go into that. Uh, it's uh, part of the iterations that we went through. Uh, when we started out, uh, out we had a different processor, which was a six core. And as we uh, gradually built up, uh, new technology also came out and then the need for better technology as well, like with the display. And so we then migrated to uh, from 16 to uh, 32 gigabytes of RAM. And uh, part of the reason for that is just to uh, uh, expand uh, the usability of, of Noto, we found that, uh, you know, given certain situations uh, like the Black Marble attack, uh, some certain nodes were kind of uh, struggling and it wouldn't certainly hurt to have extra bandwidth. And it's serving us really quite well. Uh, it, it really enables uh, a whole lot of uh, other stuff that we can do with the device that we wouldn't have been able to otherwise. Um, uh, along with uh, a terabyte to a two terabyte SSD so as standard. And so what you see is is pretty much what everyone will, will be getting. Everyone will be getting uh, the latest and greatest Noto with 32 gigabytes of RAM with the two terabytes of SSD with and the eight core processor and the fantastic OLED uh, display. Uh, along with all the work that we've put into on uh, the UI itself. And uh, going forward, I think it's, uh, I should point out that it, it, it's, uh, I, I would say to, uh, un, to underestimate the time it would take to accomplish a project like this with um, the given the size of our team, and uh, I think it's really quite a, a, an amazing feat that uh, everyone has uh, been able to pull together. And I just want to kind of uh, give a shout out to the Monero devs and uh, Dan Sherman as well, who's been Dan, yes, yes, I know XMR, and uh, that so starting point for us uh, obviously with uh, Noda has now become its own thing and an entirely different uh, device uh thank a big partly due to the nature of uh, the customizations for the hardware but uh in essence uh, what dan has been doing and the devs have been doing tirelessly you know shipping away full time it really is uh makes uh you know, it really inspires uh, to want to build and, uh, you know, things may take time, but definitely we do have the, the capability to, to build uh, the, our own infrastructure and I think self-custody of hardware and Noto being kind of like the low energy portable device. And then uh, uh, after you release, we can look into how to scale that up um, one of the things with the Noto design was just as with Monero, it was very carefully the stack uh, and the hardware and uh, the things, uh, many tiny little decisions, uh, things like using Debian, not using Docker, and the custom stuff like having SSDs on board, having an RTC on board, which is basically a uh, real-time clock on your device, which uh, most single board computers don't have. Um, and so all the the aspect of moving from 16 gigabyte to 32 gigabyte was really something that was, wasn't a de an easy decision to make because we knew 16 would be great for today. But, um, you know, there were some doubts given uh, the future changes to the Monero protocol wherein we could see sort of slight um, size increases to the transaction 
um, before and after the surface and uh, possibly with starting with uh, the pull chain membership proofs as well, which is likely to have uh, some impact. And and so, uh, yeah, working with uh, Artic, who was also uh, really helpful in um, giving direction as to how uh, we could uh, measure our scaling ability uh, on device. And so, uh, I would say that what what we've come up with is really an optimal configuration, and it didn't really make sense to ship a 16 GB device, uh, especially given the negligible cost increase um, and uh, the potential performance benefit uh, as a result. Yeah, I mean, first and foremost, just gonna say, Abdullah, man, amazing job, amazing job. Obviously, you had a lot of people helping you out in different ways. I know you you weren't the the the, the dev necessarily coding things, but uh, you were the project manager, the leader, the the visionary. Obviously, with my with my my far fetched ideas, but you you, uh, <laughs> you you brought it all to rea into reality into to fruition, um, and you drove it home, and you never. You, amazing job man and uh you have an amazing design ability i mean you see it in the, the way the noto itself is designed the branding i mean uh this this guy is is an artist in addition to being a a a tech designer savant um and he puts a ton of effort into these things and he just has amazing creative abilities and project management abilities and amazing amount of patience oh my god oh my god an amazing <laughs> amount of patience really really so mostly in communicating with me uh i can be quite harsh sometimes like, god damn it abdullah <laughs> um but he's uh he's taking it taking it to this far and we will get it across the finish line and i i, I do want to say uh what do i want to say oh yeah only seven left so if you go to add cart here oh here's a little thing we might want to fix i mean it's just a website thing you got to select this first okay um there's only one color though right we're they're all monero orange we've yep, every, everybody's spot. everybody's getting the founders edition everybody Very like nice. uh like Abdul has said, is getting the, the latest upgrades. Um, so I guess and, I want know, to touch on that. So people who had paid before, because it was like it was cheaper before, um, they're basically mm -hmm. getting grandfathered into this new version, if I'm understanding yeah. what you were saying. Yes, yes. Wow. I think Straight we nice. had asked people to give us some more payment if they didn't, uh, but it doesn't matter where if people haven't, those that haven't, uh, they're being included. Everybody's get, Everyone's getting a note out here. Everybody that's some good. Everybody that's some getting good a no. You get a no. No. You get everybody. Get... Let me quickly move the laptop uh, real quick. BRP. Uh, and besides, uh, the majority of the pre-order users did. In fact, uh, we did offer them a discounted uh, price to upgrade. Like not the full difference in in price, but uh, mm -hmm. like half of that. And most, uh, it's like uh, almost uh, everyone had. So it's it wasn't really a thing. Uh, we knew everyone was going to get uh, the yeah. Everybody was on board. The flagship device. And, uh, uh, I see. Uh, also, I want to say, in terms of uh, future uh, release schedules, uh, it really has been difficult to time things down, and especially the like the first time around. There's just so much, uh, so much thing, uh, uh, different uh, streams involved, uh, not just software. And uh, I want to say, I hope like the stuff we did kind of goes skin deep it's not just the beauty of the enclosure which is really uh, yeah a lot of detailing went into that no doubt but the interface as well and we hope like a lot a lot, a lot of the logic and the the, the little stuff uh, that we hope uh, really gets uh, like it get, it gets you know a good experience out of uh, using your node uh, Undervalued well as... Monero tip the dollar. Great show as always. Thank you so much, man. Thank you so much. And, and another thank tremendous you. thank you to obviously, uh, you know, Abdullah and Brindle and uh, Chian and everybody that's been, that's been building it and Arctic Mine that helped out and all, all, everybody. But to, to everybody that bought one that was an early adopter, took the risk with us. Mm -hmm. 
stayed along for the for the long ride and waited patiently um just getting updates in the chat uh but being excited about the fact that we were continuing to develop on it tremendous thank you to everybody this thing ab absolutely would not happen if people didn't give us trust in the beginning um so i th i thank you for trusting me because i think it was that was really the role i played in this is guys trust me because i have these people building it um and and people came they they, they took a shot they bought these without knowing if we'd make it to the finish line. So greatly appreciate all the early adopters, all the, all the founders. Treme tr it's tremendous help. Uh, we, we're putting a lot of money into this project at the end of the day. And the fact that everybody pre-ordered took a lot of weight off our shoulders. We only have, I think we're saying only... Yeah, we're only saying six left in stock because uh, we'll we'll have a few that we'll keep on hand that we're going to bring down to the conference, maybe sell a few in person. But other than that, there's only six that are left to order online of the first uh, hundred order. This is a really cool device, guys. I mean, yeah, it costs it costs a little bit of money, but it's very, very custom, right? This isn't some off the, the shelf um rebranded like NUC or one of those small PCs you can buy. It's it's got uh, a bit more of a custom hardware, um, which is pretty cool. And of course, the actual case is very high quality. And I've seen, I've seen one. I, I saw it in uh, BaneroCon, and then I saw it in New York at Doug's place. A uh, very nice device, very high quality. Uh, the screen looks amazing because it's OLED, and it's got really good specs as well. So, yeah, yeah it's a fully custom SBC, fully custom case. And the price isn't so bad once you consider the overall uh, package. Uh, it really is quite quite good value considering what you get uh, for your money. Uh, most mobile phones start at a thousand dollars. Most flagships at least start there, and they're not. I mean, they don't have this kind of flexibility. They they you can't plug in. I mean, you may be able to plug in displays and stuff, which you can do with Noto. But, uh, you know, this has Ethernet. This is like a conventional computer. And it has like a supercharged uh, everything. All integrations, the ports are the latest, the fastest. The uh, Wi-Fi and the Ethernet as well. And so it really is a no compromise approach. Um, and if I, I remember should... correctly, this is still the this rock chip, the RK3588. That's still... That's still a decent amount faster than the Raspberry Pi 5, isn't it? Yeah, it's way faster. And way faster. With the, with the 32 gigabyte uh, of RAM and with you know all the integrations on board, there's no bottlenecks. And so uh, the actual performance is, is likely to be you know, way higher, especially at higher loads. Um, and uh, for for next batches, I would say we're, I mean, this, uh, this is probably, uh, we're, close to having um, closed out the first batch of uh, the orange devices. The next batches will be silver and black. And uh, we might just use a quarterly release schedule. But that's just you know easier for me to kind of, uh, uh, because you know, monthly or you know, timing it down, even though future batches are likely to be more predictable because there's less, um, uh, there's less variables. We'll already have had um, a, a completed uh, QC of the software and, uh, you know, like uh, the design has, has already gone through like one major batch. And so uh, it'll be just a matter of kind of saying, okay, give us a hundred more and just yep. waiting for for them to mm -hmm. give us that, even though, you know, it's tricky, China's tricky, but there's always compromises with hardware, right? And I personally had to fly out there, took a kind of personal risk. Um, uh, maybe I'm, I'm exaggerating, but you know, it's, it's, a, it's always been a thing rather without going into like the, the CCP aspect of, of the whole thing. Um, the, the industry is bunch and, uh, they do have like uh, the we did uh, guarantee certain things like being able to have like the full schematic of the hardware the, the block diagram and all the uh, the the whole um diagram of the hardware uh layout so that you know uh, 
you know, we could have it uh, verified and we knew what we were getting. And so, um, yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, it's been a, a great labor of love, I would say, to get get to this point. It's it's really, uh, I mean, no point John Doe had a question I, I, here. I do, do want to ask, uh, yeah, John Doe asked this earlier in the show. I hope he's since been convinced then as to as to why. Cool, why use one of these instead of running my idea on a computer? Well, I think it's right there. It's it's a unique device designed for a specific purpose. And yeah, you could you could run Monero D on a normal computer on any Linux computer. This is just a Linux computer after all, but it comes with a nice uh, kind of built out e interface with an ecosystem where you can install stuff easily. Um, and if you're someone who just wants something that's quick and easy and will be continually supported, uh, this might be for you. And it's such a cool, unique device anyway by itself yeah, and, I, like, and i i think you know there, there's something to the fact that it is built just for first and foremost for the purposes of running a reliable plug and play dedicated node as described right and monero what is the monero node unpruned optimized dedicated dedicated being the keyword right so the idea is that this thing is running 24 7 plugged in somewhere and that you're relying on it to as your own personal note. Can you do it on a computer? Sure, you can. Uh, but this allows you hopefully to do it in a way where you have a machine just dedicated for that purpose. So if anything happens with your computer, using it for other things, no, you want you just want your node running 24 seven. So it's always usable, you can connect to it with LWS. And then obviously all these other reasons we're talking about, right? Because then it becomes more than just a node, uh, becomes a, a little Monero computing device for various Monero related apps. Yeah, just like Demi is saying, uh, you know, if you're experienced and you want to do it on your computer, that's totally fine. But if you're a noob, then yeah, setting setting that up, all that stuff up and not just setting it up, but then maintaining it and making sure it works if there's any problems with it, that can be a lot for someone who's not yeah, experienced. Yeah, not, not to mention, like, not, not everyone has their computer on 24 seven. Yep, mm -hmm. so this is like, a, this an is easy way that anybody can go. You plug it in uh, and it, it just works. You don't have to think about it really. You don't have to think about the storage that's necessary for uh, running a note like, oh, do I have 200 gigabytes spare on my on my laptop's hard drive? Yeah. And the so. additional complexity that goes with running a node plus all, all your other stuff, this is really the recommended way of running a Monero node, I would say. Just node on device, nothing, you know, as little else as possible. And so we've really kind of uh, uh, taken that to the extreme, keeping just Monero D and just a bunch of value uh, value added sort of stuff. Um, yeah, Doug, is that the silver one over there? I do have one more question if I could ask before we move on to the news. Um, Built, so, built for for Tumen to be able to use. It's literally, <laughs> I was literally the monkey that they're testing it on. Yeah, so that, that is what it's built for. It's yeah, built I'm for... seeing some things as well. Nodo has only uh, pin unlock or possible with a long password too. Uh, so there's actually an admin password uh, that's set up at first boot. So the first time you open up Nodo and you turn it on, you'll be met with a screen. You'll have to change your own password. And we've done this because we didn't want to just set a default password, Monero Nodo, and uh, have you you've not changed it ever, and that be a risk to remote SSH SSH access. Uh, and so you'll you'll be kind of uh, forced to set a new pass admin password for your device at first boot. And you'll be uh, asked to set your p two two different pins. Uh, one of them being the device pin, which basically locks your screen, right? So if you just want to lock your screen, not be able to access like the settings on the device, that's that's one pin. And then there's the address pin, and this is uh, a bit more complex, but it's it's quite clever actually. What this does is locks all addresses, including the miner deposit and the Monero pay address. And the idea being that um, it, if I'm an admin running a bunch of stores, five different stores, I have five devices at each store, and I just set my own wallet, my primary wallet and view key on each device. And when once set, that locks behind an address pin. And uh, you can only change that with, uh, with the special address pin. And so, the idea being that you just need to have them, you're, anyone can pretty much 
user access the device without being able to modify or reroute payments potentially. It's just one of right. the yeah. If, if this if this nodo is sitting in you know one of these Monero um, marijuana dispensaries here where they're accepting Monero cash and Monero payments, uh, the the people working at the store will have access to the nodo to to manipulate in some ways, but they won't be able to change the addresses inside. Right. So exactly. it becomes it becomes a POS system that can't be taken advantage of by any of the employees at, at, a, at a place that's running it. Sure. I do have one more question if I can ask. Sure, go ahead. Um, so you mentioned that um, it has, or it's including Monero Pay. I haven't used that myself personally. Um, I would like to try it out. I do really like BTC Pay Server. Uh, and I know you were looking into having that as maybe not coming with it, but being something that could be installed. And I know there's an aversion to Docker um, on the device, which I, I don't really personally have a problem with. Um, would it be, would it be something that you're looking into maybe if like, okay, so somebody wants to use BTC pay server, there's a script, an easy script that'll just install Docker and all that stuff for the user if they want to. I could work on that. Yeah, sure. Cause I mean, obviously someone like me, I can just install it if I want to, regardless, I'm just thinking of, we could do that. there's probably going to be a lot of people that will want BTC pay server anyway, just because of yeah, how yeah. extensible it is. Could you tell me what the, what the benefit of BTC pay server is over Monero pay? Just, uh, Curious. I couldn't um, tell you myself because I haven't actually used Monero Pay. I would like to try out Monero Pay myself. Right. Uh, I'll look into it soon for sure. There, um, there's no UI on Monero Pay itself, right? So that, that's why I went for it. I see. You can build your I own see. UI on top of it. No, I, I didn't really get a chance to really uh, uh, talk about really BTC Pay and Monero Pay in depth. Uh, BTC Pay, of course, uh, we, we could certainly run uh, the BTC Pay server, Monero Focus store, or otherwise. And um, uh, the question remains is what it's going to look like on device. Like it's not going to have integration with uh, Nodo UI. And so we're, we're going to have to build the interfaces or at least display the BDC um, uh, UI. Um, we could have a little web view for it if, if necessary. Yeah, yeah, that could be done. But then, you know, it's not going to look. And, and part of, uh, yeah, of course, there was the issue with Docker and uh, uh, I mean, we've, I mean, it's not really an issue. It's more, it's more a design choice, really. Uh, yeah, kind of and that's something as that and as integrated as possible, which uh, there might be doable with Docker, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was very easy at the beginning to kind of just throw everything in with Docker. That was like the obvious choice, but uh, at the very beginning, we were faced with this, and we kind of chose to go the native route, basically running uh, on on Linux. Um, and uh, one of the, the other advantages with Monero Pay is that it allowed us to um, keep, it doesn't have like features uh, BTC Pay server has, like, you know, products um, with preset amounts, stuff like that. So it's really a very simple interface, which allowed us to also control the, um, the front end of it. So it really, um, fits in with uh, everything uh, else on the node of uh, UI. Yeah, really all yeah. Monero Pay does is it it uh, automatically checks for new payments to certain addresses that it creates and it has a little callback URL uh, that it'll uh, send a request to when the payment is done, which is very easy to work with. So, that, that's what, so it's yeah. something that's a bit more custom. It has to be taken advantage of. Yes, and you, you build the, the UI or the, the thing on top that's of cool. it. That's yeah. cool. We will, you know, we'll, we'll have this thing, as I said, obviously running at Monerotopia it will be the nodes that people can connect to locally down there. It'll be, uh, so, you know, that hopefully that will improve the infrastructure. People will be able to more quickly sync their wallets. Uh, but in addition, uh, we'll get it. We'll get a vendor vendor or two to have a, a Noto sitting out in front on, on their on their on their stand, perhaps. And we could be testing out Monero Pay POS system. That'll be super in, cool. At, at the conference, 100%. And I, we're going to have BTC Pay there competing as well. So it should be, it should be interesting, <laughs> actually. It should be interesting. Hit a mouse tip to 50 cents. Even for non noobs, you want your node to be isolated, not have other processes running around excited, it, as you would on your Windows or Mac or, uh, exactly. Windows or Mac computer. Dedicated. Very true. All right, guys. Uh, I tortured you guys enough. 
Uh, oh, one, one more thing, very, very Go small ahead. thing, because uh, I was thinking about it. Uh, it has I2P on board. It uses I2PD, which is a simpler in implementation in C++ instead of the, the big bloated I2P Java. I don't hate it, but it's like it's not meant for this device. But um, this also means that if you have your Nodo, you can just use it also alongside it as an I2P uh, router that you can connect to. So you can use your little... Amazing. Uh, I2P dedicated browser and connect it to the Nodo and browse I2P websites if you want to. Just a, wow. a, a, a simple, small feature, but it's nice to have because it's another dedicated thing that you could just use it for. Because I2P works better if you keep it running for long periods of time, which not everybody with a laptop can do. Mm. So, yeah, the option with I2P is that's always been its Achilles heel. And I would uh, love to see more, more adoption in I2P because it's such a cool network. Compared to Tor, what would, take way for, more... what would it take for the Nodo to run a Tor node? No, that's not in the cards, right? It runs a Tor node. No, it does. Oh, it's running a Tor node. Okay. And an I2P oh node. Yeah. Holy shit. And you also have the ability to route all connections through Tor. Uh, so how much Tor. how much space is that taking up on the Nodo? The the Tor Tor node. Probably nothing. Not a whole lot, no. Okay. A few megabytes. Of kittens. Ballpark. Yeah, I obviously have no no tour knowledge. Um, very cool, very cool, amazing. Yeah, because one of, one of the urban hackers is going to be giving a workshop on on tour down at yeah. down at Monerotopia as well, and trying to convince people to to run their own tour node. Yeah, so in addition to contributing to the Monero network by running your own node, you're also contributing to Tor and I2P, which is yes, sir. Right? And you also get the benefits of, of those as well. Like, Wait, you know, so are you talking about running an actual like um like a Tor relay server? Yeah, maybe that's why. Or are you um, talking about like to... running the Tor daemon locally for you to use Tor? Yeah, I mean, the, are, is there benefits to the network when you're running a Tor daemon locally, or it's only not it's... that much? No. Okay. No. All right. If, if so you launch, that's, launch, that's what I'm meaning. It would be running right. a Tor relay. Right. So to run a Tor <laughs> relay, what are the what are the constraints of that? Just bandwidth. Yeah, just a bit of bandwidth. Uh, and the, the very tiny possibility of the feds knocking on your door because they think you've, you've been If you're running an exit. Of... If you're... Yeah. Well, mm. true. Well, well, true. Uh, what I'm getting at, would it ever make sense to run Tor relays on? Is, could that be an app on the Nodo? Would that make sense? Uh, it, it could be a, a simple setting. It doesn't have to have to be a whole app on its own. It can just be a simple setting if you want. I, I can have that if you want. Uh, we've also wow. considered VPN as well, you know, incorporating uh, a simple, like just entering your IVPN or MoFAT uh, credentials or something and, and just uh, connecting, uh, giving you an interface to set your VPN on device. Uh, mm. You know, there's MoFAT wouldn't work. Uh, because you have to say, stop, this, this is, uh, this is, we're going to stop now. Yeah. And, yeah. and then we're going to worry about ad adding the, all the cool stuff later and uh, really uh, you know focus on what we uh, do have currently which is also mm -hmm. cool stuff yeah and, and there is uh, we, we look forward to hearing from from everyone there's been a lot of great feedback we've incorporated a lot of stuff based off of just people uh talking talking on one of the channels or you know just asking hey can we do this and and uh, saying yeah we could do that no problem uh accessibility stuff like the keyboards came about that way doug you requested uh news at news and you know a, a, a nicer display and so it really has become this uh like the cool device that everyone seems to want that uh is going to draw attention to monero even though it can it, it's really simplifying the whole process of getting like the basic stuff done with it uh you know relaying transactions through it accepting payments and uh, LWS stuff, you know, accessibility again. Awesome. Yeah, I do. I do really love the idea of adding potentially Tor relay. Just keep, I guess, keep put that on the list of uh, potential things that we want might want to add. Yes, sir. And, yeah, I should uh, point out that once this is out there, once you know, we'll get there eventually. Uh, and uh, once this is really out there, uh, and we begin to kind of get into the next batches. Uh, I, I really want to, I really have time essentially to focus on uh, merchant adoption. I think uh, there's been some talk about, you know, 
getting those fantastic players out there, you know, getting merchants involved. So it could be, you know, kind of layered, not just uh, adopt, adoption with Monero, but um, making accessible the receiving of payments and, and the whole like stack mm -hmm. of Monero yeah. pieces that, uh, that may, I mean, we, may not. Yeah, we, we yeah. get these to the point where I could start going to these, you know, weed dispensaries here in New York and be like, hey, you might want to add one of these to your store so you can accept Monero payments and it integrates with your POS. Like, it, that's the holy grail. We get to that point, right? And now that's we're such, the dug way. And now yeah, we're so, on board. We're onboarding stores, man. We're, you know, yeah. this is, and it's so making sense marketing. to them. It's making sense to them. They're now they're they're not dealing with cash, which is which is you know dangerous, right? Where yeah. they people come okay. in and rob them, take all their cash. They're 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 dealing with you know uh, untraceable digital cash that they're no, that nobody can steal from the store. I mean, it's like there's real utility there. Yeah. Uh, awesome, we guys. just need, we just need to continue to build out the ecosystem that allows them to do that easily. I see uh, Tux, yeah, is trying to move us along. Before, yes, agree. before we go yeah, on another let's, side let's quest, go. Doug let's go, let's is go, time go. constrained. So am I. But thank you guys uh, for coming on and showing <laughs> showing off the Noto. It's a very cool product, and I'm excited for it myself. I just want to end on one the one last thought. Right, is the you know the reason we're talking about I run a dedicated node. The reason why running for the noobs out there, right? It's important to to run your own node so that uh, it it makes your essentially makes your use of Monero more untraceable and untrackable. You're not taking the risk of going through some uh, you know malicious node that's scanning your usage of Monero that knows every time you're trying to send a Monero transaction that can see your IP. So it's it allows you to use Monero in the most private and secure way possible when you're running your own node. And just because you're not mining, it doesn't mean that you're not helping the network by running a node.